hello to all of you ultralight weight shift aircraft enthusiasts out there. I had a cold but good flight today and I thought I'd show this video about what the differences are in flying with skis in the winter versus with tires in the summer. So let's get into it. The biggest thing to me is that in winter time it's just plain colder. <laughs> and that means setting up is longer. You have to wear bulkier clothing. Sometimes you have engine start issues. Sometimes you have frost buildup on your wing. Sometimes you have problems with your instruments related to the battery, especially on your GPS radio and GoPros for filming. And basically, cold flying means a lot of times you just don't spend as much time in the sky as you would if it was warm. But obviously, if you waited until summer, to do your open cockpit ultralight flying, you'd only be flying about a third of the year. So there are real advantages though in the winter time. The air is colder and denser, which means better lift, shorter takeoff, and faster climb rate. Before takeoff, I got a text from my buddy saying that he and his fam were over at the park and I should come fly by and say hi. So you can see them here. And one of the things about flying around people is you have to make sure you maintain all the FAR 103 flight rules as well as your situational awareness and not do stupid stuff that could get you hurt or piss people off. So here I am flying around and making a few passes and waving before I decide to take off and go find some places that don't have any people to practice some landing on snow with the skis. So what's it like flying with skis? Well I find that skis provide more air resistance than tires so generally you require more power to fly which means more fuel consumption to go the same distance. But they are more stable on the ground but you also don't have brakes. So here I am checking out a potential spot to land. It's a path that's been made by snow machiners, also known as snowmobilers. And the thing about site selection is you have to check for particularly deep snow, ruts, and be sure you have enough obstacle-free real estate to work with. I decided to pass on this one. Up ahead I made a mistake that almost cost me big time. I had plenty of area to work with, but the snow was deeper and more rutted than I thought. Take a look. See, it was a pretty bumpy ride, so I decided to give it full power, push out aggressively, then once I popped off, pull in to get my flying speed up, and fortunately, it worked. I did better on this next landing. Take a look and see if you agree. So that landing felt really good to me. And right here, I'm thinking about the quality of the snow and how well the skis move across it. And as I make this turn, I'm also thinking about how deep the snow is and whether I've got enough prop clearance. It all seemed to work out just fine and I was able to make it back onto the makeshift airstrip. So give it some gas and here goes nothing.
I continued down the valley, I happened to spot some snow machiners down below playing in the snow. So I had to come down and have a closer look and have some fun. You can see one of the guys on a snow machine right here. A little farther down the valley I came into some mining country where there were some frozen gravel pits. So I began looking for another place to set down. Is the snow too deep? Will I get stuck? Will I be able to take off again once down? These are all questions I had to answer in deciding whether to land or not. As I got lower to the ground, I started picking up some unexpected turbulence probably from rotor off of the hill to the right. I don't think so. Up ahead, I could see more mining activity so I thought I'd check it out and see if there were any landing opportunities. Pretty geography, but I think I'm gonna stay in the air. As the sun got lower on the horizon, I decided it was time to start heading back home, which happened to be directly into the sun, and I used my hand as a visor so that I could keep my eye on the direction I needed to go. By this time the sun was behind the clouds and I was starting to get cold. Fortunately, I saw the airstrip just ahead. Pretty flat light right now, so I raised my visor to get a better view.
And whenever you make a turnaround, you got to keep your eye on your wingtips to make sure they don't run into anything like a fence. This flight was actually over an hour long, and even though I got cold, I'm pretty impressed with that Poloni 250 engine paired up with the Northwing Tandem 2 for stall capabilities. Thanks for watching and friendly skies.